What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender Materials and Nodes tutorial for today. So in today's video, I wanted to talk through some different things you can do with nodes in order to help you set up your materials and keep everything organized and working really well inside of Blender. So as a lot of you know, I started off with SketchUp and I've been working with Blender more recently. And so one of the places I went when I wanted to learn more about the basics of how to use Blender was CG Cookies courses. And so you can check those out by visiting the link in the notes down below, but they've got an entire library of courses that you can visit talking about everything from lighting to materials to they've got a new one out on rigging right now. So that I'm currently going through and um, it's really great educational material. So it's got example files you can download and follow along. So if that is something you're interested in, um, you can check that out at the cgessentials.com slash CG cookie in order to take your blender learning to the next level. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so tip one is going to be the obvious one that anyone that's worked with nodes for any amount of time inside of Blender probably already knows, and that is to make sure that you enable Node Wrangler. So you can go up to your preferences and you can just search for Node Wrangler. It's an add-on that's built into SketchUp that adds a ton of different tools for enhancing your node-based workflow. So you should just load this one and probably just save it um, in your preferences so that it's always loaded. It's going to make your life a lot easier. But what Node Wrangler is going to do is it's going to add a bunch of different functions um, to your ability to work with nodes inside of Blender. So for example, if you look at the documentation here, there's different things for lazy connect, there's merging, um, there's just a ton of things that make these nodes a lot easier. So for example, let's say we wanted to add a material to this object right here, and you wanted to use a PBR workflow. Well, we would just tab over into the shading tab, But let's say we were to click on new and add this new principled shader. Well, what you've probably done in the past is you've probably dragged a bunch of your different maps in here and started setting them up, right? So for example, if I wanted to apply a brick material here, I've got some maps I downloaded from CCO Textures, but if I bring them in, I have to set them up all manually, right? Like you start dragging these in, and then you bring in things like your roughness maps, your ambient occlusion maps, other things like that, and you've got to set them all up, right? You got to drag them into these different tabs, and uh, it can just be really time consuming. However, with Node Wrangler enabled, what you can do is you can just select your principled BSDF shader and just give it to just do a control shift T. You can just select these. You can click on principled texture setup and this is gonna bring these in and it's gonna hook them up automatically. So it's gonna check the names of these materials and it's going to basically set them up without you having to do anything with them. So you can see how this has come in here, for example, and it's set up my displacement mapping without me having to do anything with it. It set up my normal map, my roughness map, did all of that automatically. So that's something super cool that Node Wrangler can do. It's also got other functions in here, like let's say this was maybe unhooked and maybe let's say so let's say that my normal map and my displacement map were unhooked and we didn't want to use them anymore. So you can just do an Alt X in order to delete your unused nodes. So you can see how those nodes got removed because they're not actually hooking in here. There's a ton of different functions like this inside of Node Wrangler. Um, I recommend flipping through the documentation page to see some of the other things. We might do a video on them in the future, but that's gonna be number one. You really want to use Node Wrangler whenever you can. All right, so the next tip is to use node groups. And so a lot of the time what'll happen is you'll have different groups of nodes controlling something, right? Like this is the tutorial from my Wind Waker textures, um, Tree nodes video that I did and what we have is we have a set of nodes up top that control the things having to do with the uh, splash around these objects. I will link to this full video in the notes down below in case you're interested but these nodes control things having to do with the objects right and then these these nodes down here control the things having to do with the water that's inside of here well what we could do is we could take these and we could group them because i was doing a lot of like um, scrolling back and forth between the top and the bottom but we could just take all of these and select them and hit control g and so when we hit control g notice how we get this kind of like green color in here that means that we're working inside of a group and so now if i hit the tab key you can see how this is minimized right here. So this whole thing is now contained inside of a node group. If I want to access it, I just select it and hit the tab key. So we could do the same thing for these nodes down here. We could do a control G and then hit tab 
in order to do that. Well now, I can just take these and instead of having them like way out here needing all that space, I can just kind of move them over and my node group gets really manageable, really easy to change. Then if I want to edit one of them, I can tab in here just like this to see the entire node group. And so let's say that you have a few of these. So another tip that I have is to rename them or relabel them so that you can see what's inside of each group. So for this group, for example, you can select it and tap the N key on your keyboard. Well, notice how you're gonna get information about that node over here. Well, what I could do is inside of the label function, I can relabel these. So instead of them saying node group, I could have one that says objects. Notice how when I change the label over here, it changes over here. Then I could have one down below that says water. So now I have a node for water. I have a node for objects. So I can see what each one of those are. So if you have a bunch of different node groups in here, you can label them using the properties. Note that you can adjust other things like the color as well. So if you wanted this to have different colors in it, notice how as soon as I did this, um, this color got a little bit lighter. So you can adjust that so that it's on or off. I don't use it a lot, but you might. All right, so one of the problems with this though is right now we can't adjust any of the values inside of this because it's all minimized, right? Like you could tab in here and then adjust, like let's say I wanted to adjust my noise up in here, for example, um, or my roughness so that I'm getting a different value for my waves in here. Well, I could tab in here and make that change, but that gets kind of time consuming. Well, what you can do instead is if you look at this, you're gonna notice that there's a group input function right here. Basically what the group input function is going to do is it's gonna set it up so that you can make a change to a value um, without having to go inside of your group. So. For example, let's say I wanted to adjust this add value. I could just drag a node into the value function right here. Well now, if I tab out of this, notice how I can adjust that value with this slider. So what you could do is you could set this up so only the things that you make a lot of changes to show up inside of your um, group inputs. So for example, another setting, something over here, that adjust the roughness of these waves. Well, if I'm gonna adjust that a lot, I can just drag another node right into that roughness right here. So now if I tab out of this, I have the roughness in a place where I can adjust it. I have the value in a place I can adjust it without having all that other stuff in here. So you can use node inputs or group inputs in order to really make your node something that you can adjust quickly without having to wade through all this extra stuff. All right, so sometimes you don't necessarily want to group everything, right? What you want to do instead is you want to create a frame um, that basically allows you to visually see the different parts of something, but you don't necessarily need it to be minimized like the groups function did. And again, this is something that they also talked about in the CG Cookie course in detail. So if you want more information on that, you can check that out. I will link um, to CG Cookie again in the notes down below. But basically what this does is let's say that we want a frame that contains all of our images, right? So what we could do is we can just do a shift A inside of our shader editor. We want to go down to the option for layout and click on the button for frame. And so when we click on the button for frame, what that does is that adds what it sounds like. It adds a frame in. And notice how you can adjust this frame by clicking and dragging it right here. But then let's say we wanted to add some objects in here to our frame. So in this case, we want to add all of our different materials, right? Well, I can just drag those all into this frame like this. And so now they're all contained inside of this frame. And that gives us a few different benefits. So here's the first one, which is the label. So you can just tap the N key and you can just name this or label it um, material images, right? And so you can take it and you can move all of these around just by clicking and dragging, just like this. So the cool thing about this is now you can put all of these together. You can see exactly what a group of nodes is doing. Um, you can also adjust things like the color as well. Um, if you're like me and you're a very visual thinker and you'd like to have things colored up, that's a good way to do that. So one thing to note about this is right now, remember how I was clicking and dragging it around and it wasn't resizing before? Well, that's because if you go into your properties, there's an option here for shrink. So if you uncheck the box for shrink and you click and drag this, notice how you can adjust the size of this box in here. 
So you could make this box bigger or smaller depending on what you're trying to do. But you can fit a lot more stuff in here by doing that. So in addition, you can also add frames inside of frames. So let's say for example that I wanted a second frame in here. And let's say that we wanted the second frame to have something like, let's say we wanted our normal and displacement maps to be in here. So what we could do is we could put this frame inside of this other frame and we just label this um, normal slash displacement. So that's gonna name that right here. Then you could drag those inside of this box. Notice how you want to uncheck the box for shrink um, so that this doesn't automatically shrink down and take all your space away. Um, but let's say one of these two nodes in here, well, you could do that just by adjusting these like this. So we could take this one, check the box for shrink. And now notice how that group inside of the group is working just, or that frame inside of the other frame is working just fine. Now we've talked about taking our different objects and organizing them either with groups or with frames, but now let's talk a little bit about the nodes that are going through here. So there's a lot of different things you can do in order to make those a little bit more organized. So let's say you've got something like this X noodle that's running across here. And what it's doing is running behind a bunch of stuff inside of uh, your inside of your screen. And so that's fine, but if you wanna keep things organized, that can get a little bit tricky and things can just look a little bit ugly in here. So what we can do is we can use what's known as a reroute node. And so the way that we can add a reroute node is you wanna hold the shift key and click and drag the right mouse button. So notice how when you click and drag the right mouse button, you're gonna get this path right here, right? And if I click and drag this right, right mouse button, across here, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a little node right here. And so you can't click and drag that, but what you can do is you can tap the G key in order to move this around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this reroute node right here, and then I'm gonna do a shift right click again, I'm gonna move this other node over here. So what that's doing is that's allowing me to reroute my nodes inside of Blender so that I don't have to have things running behind other nodes anymore. And notice how that adjusts. If I change this node around, um, the noodle's gonna adjust with it. So we can use this to get a lot more organized. So let's say for example, that we wanted to kind of get all of this in a straight line right here. So make it a little simpler like this. Well, what we could do is we could just come in here and we could just uh, add a reroute node here. So shift, right click and drag, and we'll just move this up and maybe over like this. So you can use this to reroute things as many times as you want. Um, a lot of this depends on how um, tied to right angles you are, but um, you can use this in order to add those reroute nodes so that you don't have to look at this. I'm um, just running behind these other objects like this. And so if you wanna get rid of any of these reroutes, you can just hold alt and then click and drag in order to move this away. And then you can just delete it like a simple object right here. And so let's say, I'm just gonna delete this out. Let's delete these out just for a second. So I'm just gonna hold alt, remove this just like that. So let's say, because this has two things coming out of our X value, right? So I don't know why I have a reroute over here, but we'll get rid of that. That has two things coming out of X value. And what it's doing is it's creating these two lines that can be a little bit frustrating, right? But if they both are coming out of this point, you can hold the right mouse button and drag across this. Well, what that's going to do is that's going to add that reroute node over here. And so when we've got that reroute node over here, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to um, connect or have both of these coming out of this reroute node right here. Well, then if we were to hold the shift button and right click and move this down. Notice how this is a lot smoother, right? So it's a lot smoother because instead of having two lines coming out of here, you just have a single line coming out of here, which can make your life a lot easier. So you can also select a reroute and just do a control X in order to delete that as well. So one thing you might have noticed right now is that these nodes are all straight. And so a lot of people keep them as straight in here, but there's also an option here to make those nodes curve. And I wanted to show you where that is. So to make those nodes curve, you're just gonna go up to edit, preferences, and then inside of preferences, you want to go into, so you wanna go into themes under node editor. And as you scroll down, there's an option here for noodle curving. And so when you adjust this like this, you can see how your noodles are going to curve coming off of here. So if you don't like the straight value that's in here, 
you can just use this noodle curving in order to adjust that. So that's kind of a preference thing. Um, some people like it that way, some people don't, but you can make that adjustment inside of your preferences right here. All right, so another thing you might have noticed is some nodes take up a lot more room than others. Like for example, this texture coordinate node is taking up a lot of space with things I'm not really going to use because I just want something coming out of the UV, right? Well, what you can do is you can either minimize the whole thing by clicking on the down button right here and that'll minimize it or you can tap the H key and that's gonna minimize the whole thing. But the problem with that is you can't adjust the one that you already have in here when you do that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna select this and we're gonna type Control H. So what Control H is going to do is that's gonna hide the nodes coming out of this that you're not using. So you can use this to toggle the different nodes coming out of here so that you don't see anything but the ones that you're currently using in order to save that space. So you can also use that to hide the like numerical values in here. So if you click in, or you, you click on this and you do a Control H, notice how that's minimizing only your numerical values that are in here. Um, alternatively, if you ever get a node set up online and you don't see some options in here, try hitting Control H on your keyboard to see if there's any additional values in here that you're just not seeing. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought was this helpful to you. Did you know you could do some of this with nodes? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. If you do want to take your Blender learning to the next level, make sure you check out CG Cookie. So they do have a number of different Blender courses on their website, including the new one for fundamentals of rigging inside of Blender. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more, um, having more of a classroom type experience, make sure you check that out at the cgessentials.com slash CG cookie. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.